demonstrate it. This is the Raspberry Pi, as everyone's familiar with. I'm powering it off of a um, iPod charger. Um, came with an iPod Touch, or maybe an iPhone, something like that. It puts out an amp at 5 volts, and it's been working great to power the Pi and my keyboard. I've got a 32 gig Patriot, um, 32 gig um, Class 10 SDHC card. It works great. Um, they had said there'd be some problems with Class 10 cards, but not for me. It's working great. Uh, this SD slot is very, very retro. It's pretty much made of the same material as the cards almost, and uh, it's got no latch mechanism, but it works nice and cheap, I'm sure. And it looks like you could easily desolder it and put a nice spring-loaded metal one on there if you were concerned. It's All the solder joints are easy to get to, and it looks standard. I, I've done SD card slots before. Two USB ports, and yeah, everything else I mean, you've seen before, so I'm not even going to go over it. Um, let's go ahead and plug it in, power it up. Uh, I'm using my uh, Xbox's uh, HDMI cable. 47 inch monitor, very out of date monitor, but it works great. Uh, Ethernet. And uh, let's go over the keyboard real quick. I found this keyboard at Fry's. It's great. It's uh, really hard to type on because the keys are terribly small, but it's got a touchpad built in, and I wanted a small keyboard. So, in a compact space like you'd want with a small Pi, this is handy, it, uh, but it's not very ergonomic. It's almost impossible to type on half the time. Anyways, let's power this thing up. I'll just plug it in, go ahead and watch the screen. This is the uh, Debian image. I've uh, set the CPU frequency to 900 megahertz, which is about the fastest I can get it to go. Um, it won't do one gigahertz for me. It's uh, so this isn't exactly a stock setup, but uh, I haven't changed much from the Debian image. I uh, adjusted the overscan to get it to stop going off the edges. It's just just on the edge now, and I collected enough. Let me log in here. There we go. And I'm going to fire up X. Between the uh, extra 200 megahertz and the uh, class 10 SD card, it's a lot faster than it was when I first tried it. And the touchpad works nicely. It's got this uh, CPU uh, load graph down here in the corner. That uh, that'll be priceless for you to know why it, to know if you've even clicked. If if nothing's happening and that thing's pegged, you know it it got your click and it's thinking. Um, and generally, you can just sit back and wait for the thing to stop being pegged before you run something. Okay, it looks like we've booted. Um, I've installed a couple of basic apps. Let's go education. We've got Tux Paint over here. Uh, fires up. This is not the fastest computer. Um, an educational toy. Like that. And we'll do some painting. Da, da, da. Need some colors. Oh, let's, let's do a stamp. There's a frog. Yay. I'll probably cut out half this. There's Tux Paint. It runs. Yes, I'm done. No, I don't want to save it. Cool. This is one of the stock backgrounds it came with. I like it. Oh no. Hard. Info. Yeah, there we go. Hard. There we go. Okay, what I've done is I've SSH'd into my uh, my Shiva plug. That's uh, S H E E V A plug. They were a uh, about two years ago. They were all the rage. A hundred dollar 
Linux machine um, plugged into a wall. It was the size of a wall wart or a wall brick. And uh, it's very similar to the um, Pi in that it's got a ARM processor. Um, it's different in that it does not have any video output um, unless you plug a USB um, USB VGA adapter into it. Um, it's got 512 megs of RAM. I guess memory was cheaper back then. When it was a more expensive device, it was 100 bucks. Um, it's it runs off an SD card just like the Raspberry Pi. And uh, what else about it? It's 1.2 gigahertz. It's an ARM V5. I believe the um, Pi is an ARM V11. So it's a, it's a newer version of the ARM. And uh, it's got less RAM and uh, slower processor speed. I've got, like I said, I got the Pi at 900 megahertz, so 900 versus 1.2 gigahertz. I expect the Pi to trounce this thing, but uh, we'll see. Hopefully, this is a fair enough test. Um, information. Okay. Generate report. This is going to take a long time. Select all. Oh, actually, select none. We just want to run the benchmarks. Generate. We'll go over here. Information. Oops. Yeah, we'll just say it. Performing benchmark. Okay. Now this is a remote X session. This window is a remote X session off the Shiva plug. So this is not actually running on this. Um, Pi, it's running on the other computer and displaying here. So, it'll only benchmark the Shiva plug. Select none. Okay. There we go. Now, uh, I did run one of these benchmarks on one of these machines earlier, and it took probably an hour or something, so. I'll resume the video when they're both done. This right here is a Shiva plug, in case you were wondering. It uh, has gigabit Ethernet built in. It's not going through USB. It's got a single USB port, SD card slot. It's got a JTAG uh, port with a USB interface. Um, yeah, I, I run my website and my firewall and uh, my media server goes in through that. Um, yeah, I've got a uh, cable modem hooked in through a USB Ethernet bridge. Um, my LAN is on the gigabit Ethernet port and I've got a um, two terabyte hard drive hooked into the USB. Um, so it's my media server. And it just sits back here and does its job. It's been doing it for two years now. Yeah, they've completed. They're both done. I was away while they finished. Let's go ahead and fire these up. Um, this is the one from the Raspberry Pi. And let's go over to this one and tell it to open to. Mm, CPU Blowfish. Now we got... Here's our little drag race. The Pi. Okay, I'm thinking, yeah, see, lower numbers are better. 26.19 is best. So, 82.959. Okay. Competition one, this is the Blowfish. Um, the Shiva plug is better. It's only a little bit more than a double what a Celeron would do, while well, this is uh, a little bit more than triple what a Celeron would do. I imagine these are some kind of times. Okay, let's go crypto hash. Crypto hash. This machine, 11.32. So the Pi is 11.32, and the Shiva is 17.66. Maybe somebody can post in the comments if higher is better or lower is better. I'm going to assume that lower is better, still. And uh, say that the uh, 
Raspberry Pi has won the crypto hash. Okay, next, next benchmark. Fibonacci. Fibonacci. Here's the Pi. 20. Clearly, lower is better because the Celeron is stomping that. 18. 18.84 on a Shiva plug. Um, ARM V5. Uh, it's supposed to be worse, but uh, I'm thinking that extra 300 megahertz really helps. This is uh, 1.2 gigahertz versus 900 megahertz. Okay, next benchmark. If only the uh, Shiva plug had a video output and uh, H.264 decoding. 66.92 for the Pi. 51.63 for the Shiva. I don't know. Looking, looking like it's losing everything. FFT. Another one where I don't have a Celeron to compare to. 219. 165. I don't know. Is bigger or smaller better? I'm thinking smaller because I think all of these are times. So, it's looking like the, the Shiva has beat it in every test if these are based on times. Ray tracing. Floating point unit ray tracing. Holy moly. Wow. 764. Okay, this is the Pi. 602. It's still a remarkably bad number, but it's, what, 15%? More than 15% better than the Pi. So, even overclocked, the Raspberry Pi is getting its ass handed to it by an ARM V5. That's pretty bad. Yeah, these aren't the greatest benchmarks, but there's what I could come up with on short notice. But hey, it's a $35 computer, not a $100 computer. So, here's the Raspberry Pi, and I thought some people who are familiar with the uh, with the Shiva plug might want a, a comparison. Oh, that's out of focus.